Hello and welcome to Beardy History with me, Tony McMahon, the historian with the beard. You may have seen me on Discovery, History, Smithsonian, any number of channels, but here I am especially for you to share some history. And today I've got a special Victorian edition of the programme for you. I'm going to begin by delving into my archive, as I do in every programme, to find a little special nugget for you. And this week, I'm looking at Jack the Ripper and what people in the 1880s, when he was committing his appalling crimes, actually thought about him. Well, I'm rummaging around as usual on my knees in this section of the programme where I dip into my archive. And uh, this is an old cobbler's cabinet, by the way, from uh, an asylum where my mother was uh, once a member of the medical staff. All those asylums closed at the end of the 1980s. This is a completely useless aside, by the way, but it's an old cobbler's cabinet anyway from an asylum. The things you can imagine it's seen. But anyway, today it's where I keep all my old newspapers and documents, uh, as I say, going back over 500 years. And I think here, as if by magic, is what I'm looking for. It's a copy of The Times from 1888 and there's a letter in here that's ripper related that I want to share with you. And in it, in, in, in the letters page, uh, on page three, there's a letter from um, a parson. Now he writes to the editor of the Times, he's very distraught, this Victorian parson, and he says, uh, no Londoner doubts that the police supervision of the metrop metropolis is grossly inadequate. My experience may be taken as a fair sample. He says, last Saturday, in the absence of myself and family from home, our vicarage, distant 300 yards from a fixed point, I think that's kind of like a police station, was entered from the front door in a public thoroughfare in broad daylight, the said door being left open for two hours while the house was ransacked and property to the value of £60 promptly removed. Uh, he then uh, goes on to say the experience was severe for a poor parson taking a cheap holiday and galling for a ratepayer of 15 years standing. And then he ends his, his, his coup de grace. He says, no doubt most of the police were at Whitechapel, your obedient servant, Thomas B. Dover. And that, I think, is indicative of the kind of contempt that, uh, that a parson writing to the Times in 1888, in October 1888, uh, was feeling. And by the way, I hasten to add that this is not a facsimile edition of the Times. This is uh, an original one. You can tell because it's falling to pieces now uh, that I got my hands on many years ago. Now, this is a, a bound volume of Punch magazine, which used to be a satirical magazine. It published up until about 30 years ago, but very big in the 19th century. And this is a, a, a bound volume of editions from 1888, when Jack the Ripper was very active. And there are cartoons in it that really eviscerate the police. Um, probably eviscerate is an unfortunate word to use. Um, but uh, we have, for example, here, um, two criminals uh, saying, fine body of men, the police, uncommon fine. It's lucky for us as such a blooming few of them. Um, and, and this points really to the police being stretched uh, in London. The police numbers were stretched by what was going on. In the same bound volume, we have, we have the devil um, putting up posters in London. And, and one is advertising presumably what's supposed to be a play about murder with a with a sort of mustachioed figure stabbing a woman. So very much uh, in line with the kind of neurosis that people were uh, feeling in London about this first serial killer. And here we have this very well-known cartoon that appeared in Punch at the time in 1888. And it's, it's really alluding to the poverty, the neglect, uh, the fact that what we would now call the elite had completely uh, lost a connection with ordinary people in London and with the dire poverty you can imagine that existed in London at that time. And it calls, uh, it calls this ghoulish spectre, the nemesis of neglect that floats a phantom on the slums foul air, shaping to eyes which have the gift of seeing into the spectre of that loathly at lair. Face it, for vain is fleeing, red-handed, ruthless, furtive, unerect, tis murderous crime, the nemesis of neglect. So this idea that uh, 
the, the, the kind of combination of crime and poverty. I mean, this is something that really exercised the Victorian mind, the idea of the, uh, the poorer areas of London being essentially a nest of crime and depravity and murder. And then we have this really withering, withering cartoon on the police. Um, and it's a group of criminals who are basically uh, engaging a police officer in a game of blind man's buff. Um, as played by the police, it says underneath here. Uh, and I think this is the idea of, of the police, as it were, blindly fumbling around while the criminals move deftly around them. So this was a time when the police were held in, in utter contempt by many in society, and, and not just radicals, as I read on uh, one place on the internet. This wasn't just a radical opinion. This is kind of quite a mainstream opinion that the police really were not up to the job. The idea that an aristocrat may have been uh, the real Jack the Ripper, I think is something that we can probably blame a certain novel and play for. And that novel was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, which was turned into a play around the time of the Ripper murders. In fact, uh, it had to be shut down in London, the play, uh, because while it was uh, a sellout and hugely popular, it was nevertheless felt to be uh, an unfitting production to have at the time. But if you recall, uh, Dr. Jekyll, uh, who's essentially a respectable member of society, transforms into a ghoul. And, and here we have an excerpt from uh, a 1920, 100 year old movie uh, starring John Barrymore in the lead role, uh, where the transformation happens. And I think it, it is this idea of the respectable gentleman uh, becoming a monster, possibly popularised by that play that then was conflated with the Jack the Ripper murders. And so to this very day, we have all manner of theories about respectable people, including members of the royal family, who may have been the real Jack the Ripper. I know there are umpteen theories about the real Jack the Ripper, but I'd like to know who you think Jack the Ripper was. So email me on the email appearing now on the screen and tell me who you think this ghoulish murderer actually was.